Welcome to your Friday, my friends. I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. Windy and wet, but the wind advisory, it's been cut down a bit. We'll talk about that, tracking those rain showers for the rest of the day, and of course, your Easter weekend forecast, first at four. All right, Andrew, also first at four, a mysterious shooting at a Warren gas station, a woman in the hospital, what we've learned so far. And it could be the social media fight of the year. We're gonna talk about how Twitter is trying to stop billionaire Elon Musk from taking over. Plus, here's Nick. It is opening day again, this one at Greenfield Village here in Dearborn. A big day for the village, not only for all these people that are showing up, but also because things are almost back to normal after this pandemic. We'll show you what's new, what's changed, coming up here first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sandra Ali in for Karen Drew. First at 4, wet and windy weather still blowing through Metro Detroit as we head into the holiday weekend. This year, Easter, Passover and Ramadan all intersect over the next few days. Many of us keeping a close eye on the weather as well. Meteorologist Andrew Humphrey standing by to kick off his coverage. And Andrew, where do things stand right now? Well, both hands on the wheel still as you head back and forth to different comm uh, commemorations throughout the rest of the day. Wind advisory, though, this is one piece of good news since you joined us at noon. It's now been cut down a bit geographically. It's now mainly north of 8 Mile for Oakland, Macomb counties northward, Livingston County included, still expiring at 8 o'clock this evening. Those wind gusts are still up there, easily around 25 miles per hour, 37 mile per miles per hour over in Lapeer. So watch out for flying debris, even down branches or even down power lines before this afternoon is over with. Be careful on the roads because it's wet too. We still have rain that's falling, albeit light, but still, even with light rain, you always want to be careful. Here in downtown Detroit, we're still getting some light sh uh, shower activity from Detroit to Hamtramck, also over to Dearborn. So this evening, the showers continue, winds remain up, especially before 8 p.m. and temperatures go from the low 50s into the 40s later on tonight. How much colder overnight? What about Easter Sunday itself? That and your seven day forecast in minutes. All right, thank you, Andrew Warren. Police right now investigating a mysterious shooting that left a woman in the hospital and a lot of questions still about what happened. The shooting reported overnight at the Sunoco on eight mile near Mound. The woman suffered three gunshot wounds, but she's expected to survive. A car was also taken. The Nissan Altima was later found at the corner of Mac and Van Dyke. It's now impounded and it's also being processed for evidence. This was initially reported as a carjacking, but police are still trying to piece all of this together. Police tonight tell us that they are looking for suspects who drove a white SUV. If you saw anything, give Warren police a call. Tensions are lingering in the Plymouth Canton School District after a racist social media post circulated online. These students you see right here, they walked out of class at Salem High School on Joy Road this afternoon. The administration has said the video was posted off school grounds and it's addressed the issue. But these students, they're not satisfied with the response so far. Tonight at five, we're going to hear from some of the demonstrators during a live report from Canton. Michigan State University dropping one of its COVID requirements, but also keeping another one in place into next year. The East Lansing School will no longer require face masks to be worn during class or in most research labs either. That change will go into effect on May 16th. Last month, MSU dropped mandates in most indoor areas except for instructional settings. The school will keep a vaccine mandate in effect through the 2022-23 academic year. That mandate requires full vaccination and also a booster shot. We're all feeling the pain at the pump these days, so a lot of people lined up for a little relief, and it's all thanks to Impact Church on Detroit's east side. On this Good Friday, the congregation raised $6,000. This is to offset the cost of 5,000 gallons of gas. This morning, drivers there paid $2.79 a gallon. This was at the marathon at Mac and Alter. That's a savings of roughly $1.15 off Metro Detroit's average gas price. I would like to say thank you. Keep doing this. Keep connecting community. Keep showing up. This is how we build. This is how we system build. The church says around 400 drivers benefited from that discounted price. Twitter fighting back to keep Tesla's Elon Musk from taking over that social media site. The board of directors now unanimously adopted a so-called poison pill defense to stop his bid to take the company private. Musk made the $43 billion offer yesterday. The poison pill plan would allow existing Twitter shareholders to buy more shares at a discount, trying to dilute Musk's stake 
in the company. The goal is to make it harder for him to get a majority of shareholders to try to approve his bid. So far, though, no response from Elon Musk. Russia and Ukraine continue to battle on the ground and in the court of public opinion. There's more posturing, new threats, and debates over what's really happening there in the war that's raged for 50 days now. Jason Colthorpe in the newsroom to go over some key developments today. Jason? Yeah, and there have been some, Sandra. It's now 100% confirmed that a key Russian warship did sink into the Black Sea. Ukraine claims it fired on the vessel, but Russia says it was caused by some ammunition detonating on board. Either way, it sank. Military experts say it's another setback for Russian forces. There is also debate on the status of Mariupol, one of the hardest hit cities in Ukraine. Russia is trying to knock down final resistance to its invasion, but right now Ukrainian troops continue to fight back. That resistance has tied up forces Russia hoped would move to the Donbass region for a new assault in eastern Ukraine. Russia is also threatening to step up missile attacks on the capital of Kyiv, once again after claiming Ukraine launched attacks on Russian soil. Ukraine has not confirmed any incursions. Ukraine's president is paying tribute to the unbreakable people of Ukraine. His words, he's applauding their decision and the resolve to fight back against Russia. Volodymyr Zelensky is also warning all the countries of the world that Russia could try to use chemical or even nuclear weapons as this war continues. And finally, another very sad note to report. Ukraine says it's now found 900 bodies around the capital of Kyiv. Regional police say 95 percent of them appear to have died from gunshot wounds, suggesting they were simply executed by Russian troops. It's the latest discovery coming after Russia withdrew from around the capital to focus on the east. Obviously, we'll be mm. following this every day as this moves forward. So, yeah. Sandra, back to you. Yeah, just a staggering number today. All right, thank you so much, Jason. The Congressional Committee investigating the January 6th insurrection continues to push into the inner circle of former President Donald Trump. You might remember Stephen Miller. He was one of Trump's top aides before he left office. Well, now sources close to the panel say Miller made a virtual appearance before the committee yesterday. We're told the meeting lasted for about eight hours. The committee has said Miller spread false information about alleged vote, voter fraud, and so far, it has not commented on Thursday's testimony. Last Friday, we celebrated Tiger's opening day, and today we had another opening in Dearborn as Greenfield Village opened its gates for the first time this season. Nick Monticelli shows us there are some new exhibits and also renewed joy as the village tries to get back to a pre-pandemic sense of normal. Good morning. I look forward to, to this place opening every year. The winter's gone. We have no masks anymore. It's fantastic. You hear opening day and most people think tigers, but the fans at Greenfield Village Good morning. Good morning. You're all set. are just as invested. So you came all the way from Cleveland. Right. Why? I like to drive. She likes to sleep in the car. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the village itself? Oh, that's this is a wonderful place. We don't have anything like this in Cleveland. The village opened for members today and the general public tomorrow. And for the first time since the pandemic, most of it is back to normal. The living history exhibits, the farm, even Thomas the Tank Engine will be back this year. We had the sites open, but we weren't doing many, as many activities. So we're going to be ramping some of that stuff up, more, more cooking, things like that going on. Also back again, train rides all around the village. And with steam locomotives like this one built in the late 1800s, there's a lot of prep work. Yesterday, we actually got the fire going in it, so it's nice and warm for today. But behind all that, there's a lot of work that uh, goes into maintaining these things. There's lots of points of inspection, things to clean, that sort of stuff. New this year is the Detroit Central Market, originally built in 1861 in Cadillac Square. After closing in 1893, the city moved to Belle Isle, and now the village has moved it and restored it. Nearly 80% is original. This is extraordinary. Uh, this is a very uh, wonderful, rare building, and we're thrilled that we we're able to save it. So much history, so much to see and learn, all in one place. And I'm amazed at what I keep learning and learning and learning. We don't tap the tip of the iceberg until we get into studying and looking and living what those people went through. So what's better, opening day of Comerica Park or Greenfield Village? Oh, Greenfield Village, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At Greenfield Village, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. 
So nice to see. Also, here's a look at Greenfield Village's hours. They are open Thursday through Monday from 930 in the morning until 5 in the evening. Members only days. Those are Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And then in June, they're open seven days a week from 930 until 5.